Good evening, everyone. Joe for jazbeeshobbyland.com. We filled up the uh, last break we have of 2018 Tops Heritage Baseball, the last divisional break we have. This is divisional break number one. Remember how number two filled up before number one? Anyhow, we're doing number one right now. Big thank you to these folks for getting into the action. And there are your divisions right there. Let's roll the dice, and we'll randomize each list four and a two six times. One, two, three, four, and a two. Five and six. Anthony, down to Coop. Four and a two, six times for the divisions. One, two, three, four, and a two. Five and six and final time. AL West is on top. AL Central on the bottom. There you go, Anthony, with the AL West. I wonder who, what teams are in that AL West. Some Angels, I think heard of those angels they've got it they've got a good player that everybody wants to get out of this heritage all right anthony with the al west otani hunting jeremy with the nl west dodger hunting asa with the nl central scott cooper with the al east brian with the nl east and coop with the al central let's sort by the uh, division there you go any trades anyone gonna trade and here are the Remember how I marked all of these number one, so you know they're all from the same case. I'm also, if you check at Jaspie's Hobbyland on Twitter, I'm also on a uh, a nickname hunt. So this, I'm kind of collecting. This is what I'm. This is the set that I'm building here. It's, this is my bingo sheet, and I basically want to knock out all of the nickname variations, all the known nickname variations, right here. So we got Cindergard. You can see the picture of it at Jaspie's Hobbyland, and we got Andrew McCutcheon, Kutch. At Jasper's Hobbyland, we have a picture of that as well. So I'm trying to collect all of those, so maybe we can find some more right here. I don't know if we're going to be able to get the full set, but I, I, I am at least going for it. All right, I don't think there's going to be any trade, so let's print that out. Let's get this break going. Trade window closed, TWC. All right, hot off the presses. There it is on a Saturday. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for joining us. All right, let's do this. Good luck. We'll do, we'll do these half case at a time. We'll save up three and then we'll crack all those open. Now, obviously, it's just not all about Otani. He is obviously the, the, the big name out of here, but uh, some of those nickname cards can sell for can sell for a lot. Some of the action variations can sell for a lot. There's so many different short prints and variations here. I would encourage everybody to go to CardboardConnection.com, look at their 2018 Topps Heritage Baseball checklist. That's CardboardConnection.com, and you'll be able to see... Uh, all the different variation codes because of those serial numbers on the back. That's how you can tell. So everything will ship, by the way. Our shipping team realized that trying to sort out vet base was a fruitless task. It will just take too long. Um, so everything will ship. So when you receive everything, be sure to uh, double check the backs of these cards to make sure you get the higher numbered short prints, the base short prints, cards 401 and up. And then uh, some other variations that I that I may have missed because we'll just in the interest of time we'll only be able to catch like some of the more obvious variations but please do your due diligence to check the other cards as well when you get them so that way you'll be able to see because a few variations here and there a few hits here and there uh, that might be enough to cover the cover the spot in a lot of cases like that Thor variation Nickname variation that we pulled in a personal box a little while ago. Two days ago, I think. That was a while ago. 
Um, I think that'll. I think someone was saying that's like a hundred, hundred and fifty bucks. Paid for the personal box, and then plus whatever else, whatever other uh, short prints and variations there were. The rest is gravy. The thing with this set, a lot of people love to build sets out of these and go treasure hunting with all the variations. So there is that hunting aspect here that everybody seems to really enjoy with this heritage and the vintage design, the 1969 design as well. We don't have any more divisionals of Heritage Baseball, but we do have uh, personal boxes. So if you want one, check that out on jazbeeshobbyland.com. We can ship them to you sealed, or I can pop it open for you. Although no one, no one has opted for the ship sealed. All right, so we'll kind of breeze through these. The Daco Teller, one of my favorite cards out of this set. There'll be a randomizer at the end for the March Madness spot. The second spot, is that a gold Bellinger? The second spot will be all those non-sports cards. All right, and it is gold Chrome Bellinger out of five. One out of five for the NL West and last spot mojo, Jeremy Merrill. <laughs> wow. I thought that was just going to be an out of ten. An out of five is even better, especially in a base heavy set like this. What a way to start things off. Little Dodger Joe Mojo, Jeremy Merle, all aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo woo! Wow. <laughs> That's a nice way to start things off. Well, facsimile autograph. That's the kind of heat that this heritage and these hands deliver, boys and girls. Get into more breaks, jazbeeshobbyland.com. Now, if I if I breeze by, like, this is just a regular base card, but there'll be, like, the 2016 or 2009, the 1996, 1969 variation of that. I'll try to catch it. Now, if you see me miss like an obvious uh, short print, be sure to shout it out and let me know exactly what the uh, team or the card was. Otherwise, I'm not going to take forever trying to dig back there, <laughs> trying to find a random thing. But we should be able to catch most of the obvious ones. It'll be like the the, the color swaps and, and stuff like that. That'll be a little bit more difficult. We'll try to catch as much as possible. Every box has a uh, relic or autograph. A relic or an autograph as the hit. It's usually going to be a relic. The autographs per case are just are very few per case. Maybe like one to three per case. The black border ones are one out of every 50 some odd packs, 52 packs or something like that. Oh, there's your relic. That's Chris Archer. Game use memorabilia, Chris Archer. AL East, Scott Cooper with the Rays in the AL East. Facsimile autograph that we just passed by. No excitement for that Bellinger out of five, huh? Chat is dead quiet. They're not into it. I'm into it. I thought that was cool. There's 
my chat broken? Maybe. Did I lose internet? No, still there, still alive. Testing, testing, does everyone have sound? Is everyone good? Um, I'm still recording, so. That's the important part. Oh, okay, so there people are still alive. Okay, okay. I'm just making sure that that that, that you guys are alive out there. There was just no response to that train whistle of Cody Ballinger. Did everyone see this? No one's into this? I guess no one's into it. They're like, ah, meh. So yeah, just five guys bummed they didn't get that Bellinger. I just thought the peanut gallery, the people not in the break, would be like, OMG. <laughs> Dave's just like, I just don't like the Dodgers. So he's a Giants guy, so he's like, forget it. All right, there you go. Nice first box. There you go, Patrick. That's what I want to hear. <laughs> wow, kaboom. Nice Bellinger, he says. See, that's what I, that's what I want to hear, Patrick. There you go. All right, next box. Save these. The big news of the baseball season, of course, is that no one is getting signed. <laughs> I guess some people are signing now. Uh, the ra the Rangers. I think we we saw this already. The Rangers agreed to terms with uh, with Tim Lincecum. I don't know what they're going to do with Tim Lincecum. Rangers fans, what are they going to do with him? Bullpen? They're not. They're not actually going to start him. Uh, Royals signed Lucas Duda. Twins signed Logan Morrison. Or oh, the Rays signed Carlos Gomez. All right, so there you go. There's some news there. Tiger signing Francisco Liriano. We already know that JD Martinez went to the Red Sox. Um, some other notes, some other AL notes. The Royals tried bringing in free agent second baseman Neil Walker on a minor league deal with an invitation to big league camp, but he was not receptive of that. What other, what other spring news? Any uh, For your respective baseball teams, let's, let's shout it out. What, what, who is your team? And what is the what what is the big news out of your spring training camp? Like, is there a key positional battle that's happening? Is there some youngster coming out of nowhere that seems to be lighting it up? Let me know. Report. I want to hear reports for for your respective teams. You guys are my uh, reporters out there. Patrick is saying that Tim Lincecum is going to be a starter for the Rangers. I don't know if his or is he still is he still good enough to be a starter? I don't know. If, I don't know if his his limited numbers last year were that impressive, but all right. Well, we're gonna see if they could they could make him a starter. For the Dodgers, everything's pretty much set for the Dodgers. They because they're 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 super committed to staying under that luxury tax threshold. Otherwise, they'll get max punishment and it'll not be good for them. Um, so they're staying under that luxury tax threshold. So they they have made almost no free agent moves. Uh, but they did make a big trade, mostly as a salary dump, but that kind of ended up being Matt Kemp back on the Dodgers. So with Matt Kemp back on the Dodgers, he lost 40 pounds and he's trying to tra he's trying to score a starting left field job. So that's pretty crazy.
There's Nolan Arenado. That's an action variation. You can also tell for sure by looking at the bottom of the card. Those, those end in 01. Those tiny little numbers on the bottom. That goes the NL West. Another one for Jeremy. Albert Pools Clubhouse Collection for the Angels. AL West, Anthony with that one. We got that Thor variation, which I thought was really cool. I've not seen, after Thor and after Kutch, we have not seen a nickname variation as of yet. Remember, all the cards that are numbered 401 and up are going to be um, base short prints. Like I said, um, a lot of people are really serious about building sets out here. So be sure to do your due diligence and check out the, uh, check out the backs of those cards. Facsimile autograph. Back there, there's Anthony Rizzo, Chrome. That is out of 569. 262 out of 569. Going to the NL Central, Asa with the Cubbies. Well, I'm talking about big spring training battles, Patrick, not just who people got. I'm not saying off-season moves. I'm talking about now that all the, most of the off-season stuff has been taken care of, what are the big spring training battles, positional battles, or, or young players that are coming out of nowhere? What's the news in those camps? I mean, we already know that the Yankees got Giancarlo Stan and the Rays got Brandon McKay and the Angels get got Otani. Like, we already know that. Let's get deeper into the, into the action. We're already weeks into, a week or so into spring training. Otani striking out 8 of 12. Is Aaron Judge right there? 8 of 12 in a B game. So he's, he's getting sharper and sharper. Where are they going to hit Otani when he plays? When he plays? Where in the uh, where in that where in the lineup? Oh, there you go. That's the news I want to hear. Otani hit his first home run in a spring training game. First home run. Go to MLB.com. Let's, let's take a look at some of the latest news that we have here. Oh, they're going through. They're going to put him around five, six in the order. That makes sense, right? I heard that they were also also speculation that maybe you put him like put him up a little bit higher. Bat him, bat him second in that order. You know, you have, I don't know who would, I guess I don't know who leads off, but someone leads off, he bats second, Trout bats third. You know, I think Pujols can still, can still hit diggers. Maybe you put him, you know, fourth or fifth. 
Optin could bat fourth around there. Optin can still hit pretty well. So all of a sudden, with Otani, a healthy Trout, looking at a pretty pretty strong lineup. Even if Otani just hits decently and still has a, has a threat of power, I mean that that alone can help them for the first couple months of the season. Angels win total, if you're into that sort of thing, folks, for entertainment purposes only. But the Angels win total is like eighty something, eighty four and a half or something like that. I don't know if the line has moved, but a lot of people are thinking that's going to be low. It's crazy to think that we're already weeks, a week or so in spring training or we're at, with spring training games being played uh, and that guys like Jake Arrieta, Lance Lynn, and Alex Cobb are, uh, are, not, are, are not signed. That's just crazy talk to me. Um, MLB.com releases the top farm systems. Ladies and gentlemen, so if you have rookies from rookie autos from any of these teams, Padres, number one. They have Padres at one. They've collected a lot of prospects through trades and through the draft. They've got Fernando Tatis Jr., Mackenzie Gore, uh, Luis Urias, Cal Quantrill, Michael Baez, Adrian Morajone, and Anderson Espinoza. Those are some of the big names there. Atlanta Braves, Chicago White Sox, Tampa Bay Rays, Philadelphia Phillies, uh, New York Yankees. Oakland A's, Cincinnati Reds, Toronto Blue Jays, and the Los Angeles Dodgers are your top 10 farm systems according to MLB.com. MLB Pipeline, to be exact. All right, next box. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Yankees are gone in prime cuts, folks, so if you want to keep that, keep this baseball going, let's keep it going. All right, so we're just about halfway through this half-case break. There's Andrew Heaney, black border. Again, that's one out of every 50-ish packs or so. A.L. West. Anthony with that one. I think someone was saying that uh, these go, <laughs> these news flashbacks do well. I don't know. This will be randomized to someone in the break in the non-sports, but... People build these sets. And another Anthony Rizzo for the NL Central. Asa. Out of 999. So this break will be over in about half an hour, ladies and gentlemen. So we're already halfway through the break. We're making good time. So at the top of the hour, we'll be we'll, we'll be ready to start looking looking at uh, other breaks to do tonight. So now Paul wants to do Paul wants to do prime cuts. He's picked up the Yankees. I feel like we could do another one of those tonight. I see, I see five orders coming in. Sanford, TJ, Scott V, Paul, Kip. So keep it going, ladies and gentlemen. Because this break will be over before you know it. Zero to 200. It's fast. You Darvish sticking with the blue team. I think he was, he's under the weather or something like that. I don't think he's made a, a full start yet. Maybe he has, I don't know. There's Ichiro. I don't think Ichiro is signed either. Not yet anyway. Was that an, is that considered an action shot? No, it's card 60, you could see 65 in that bottom c serial number there. Those are your just, those are your base cards.
also, I, for, I almost forgot about these. They'll be left, right. Oh man, are you serious? <laughs> they'll be left, right randomizers. And then they'll be left, right, and center randomizers. And if the right side gets it, they'll be top, bottom randomizers. That 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 goes for the those uh, multi-panel cards as well. We'll go left, right, and center on that. All right, Chris Davis for the A's at a nine ninety nine. A. L. West with another one. Carlos Correa, just a base card. Oh, I think the Carlos Correa action variation is him actually running around the diamond. Paul saying he got got the Mariners as well. Excellent. So good. Yeah, maybe that maybe that uh, that prime cuts will move. We'll be able to do that break after this one actually. That one doesn't take as long, so that should be a fun and quick one to do. And then we can look to the next break. Our relic for this box is Ryan Braun for the Brew Crew. Let's get through these here. Game use memorabilia. Uh, NL Central, Asa, with the Ryan Braun Relic. Uh, oh, now, now we can do these. The original is Sonny Jackson. Nice. Braves, A, uh, NL East. Brian Crouch with that 1969 original. The advertising panel on the back will feature just a random news story, Ben Benintendi. And on the front is Steven Sousa Jr., Wilmer Flores, and Yasiel Puig. That'll be a left-right randomizer along with this guy. Then this one, will be these guys right here, Chris Bryant, Bryce Harper, and VCL Garcia. Keep those over there, just so we keep an eye on those. All right, three boxes to go. Good luck, everybody. Another 1969 original. All right. Time for the better or worse game. So here are your 19, or here are your 2017, 2017 final, uh, final record, regular season record. Now I want to hear from people whether you think better or worse. Whether you whether you want to say better or worse as a as in record, or better or worse as in just how the team is after uh, after a relatively uneventful off season actually. Red Sox, we'll start with the AL East. Red Sox finished first with 93 wins. Better or worse? Better or worse for these guys? 93 wins. Also, we might as well just go through the uh, division. Paul says better. Yankees, 91 wins, better or worse. Rays, 80 wins, better or worse. Blue Jays, 76, better or worse. And Orioles, 75 wins, better or worse. 
I mean, what do you think, everybody? Type in the team. Let me know better or worse, your opinion. It'll be on the record on this video. Paul says Rays worse. Yeah, Rays are not going to win. I don't think the Rays are going to win 80 games this season. Move, move guys, losing guys in free agency. Longoria is not there. Kind of have to, kind of have to rebuild. I think that the, uh, I think the Red Sox. I think actually, here's here's what I think. I think the Red Sox and the Yankees. I feel like they got better. But I think they're going to still end up with a similar record. You know, I think the Red Sox will win about 93 games. I think the Yankees, you know, I think the big story, of course, they added Giancarlo Stan, but they didn't add too much of the starting pitching. You know, that's always going to be something that'll that'll affect them throughout the regular season. So they may add a few more wins to that, but they're certainly a better team. But I don't know if it's going to change exactly. And I mean, in the playoffs, it's going to be a different story. But regular season-wise... I don't think it may, maybe add a few more wins, but that might be it. The addition of young Carl Stanton and just the evolution of their other young players is going to be great, but they didn't really do much with that starting starting rotation. Great bullpen, though. Yeah, Rays probably probably going to be worse. Blue Jays, you would think that they would improve a little bit on 76 wins, but I don't know if they're going to be able to crack the top two in the AL East. And then the Orioles are probably going to be a little bit worse. All right, we'll go through all the other divisions and the teams in the next box. Moonshot. Paul says, I want the uh, Mariners to make the playoffs. That AL West is going to be tough. You know, with the Astros, obviously, and then the Angels making significant improvement. Angels almost made the playoffs last year. So they've really built upon that. I'm trying to see if those are any, any of those are the rookie cup error variations, the 1969 variations. There's Nelson Cruz, speaking of the Mariners. 505 out of 999. Uh, you're going to need Nelson Cruz to ball out. I don't know. I always feel like the Mariners are like just a few steps away. I don't know what it. Well, I don't know. I can't quite put my finger on it. They've got a good team. They've got Corey's brother. There's 2018 uh, rookie stars for the Diamondbacks. Black border, shorter print. NL West, Jeremy Merle. But yeah, I feel like they have the uh, I feel like they have like the pieces. I feel like they always get close. They always seem to be making some moves. But just something just doesn't quite click. You know, maybe one year it'll be, oh, uh, Robinson Cano isn't Robinson Cano. You know, he's not he's not healthy or you know, one time it'll be, ah, oh, you know, like King Felix is now, you know, not as consistent or not as lights out this year. But then the next year he is, but Cano's not. One year Cano's on fire, Felix Hernandez is not. He gets injured, something like that, you know. So, so I don't, I, yeah, I don't know what it is, but they've got some name players on that team. There's David Price, game used memorabilia, Red Sox AL East Coop with that one. They Paul saying they made they make dumb moves, more consistent pitching. That's true, starting pitching. Both starting and bullpen. That would be the key. Also, this card is upside down. I don't know what the deal with that is. Also, I've not seen an autograph yet. Not that, not that they're too common, but I just haven't seen one yet. I don't know what this is all about. Ugh. 
doesn't look any different. Serial number is a regular base card. It's just Tops just trolling us. Facsimile autograph. That's a that's gotta be a color swap, right? Yeah, you can see a different serial number. The last two numbers are the ones you're looking at. There you go. NL Central Asa with the Reds. Nice uh, white letters on there, color swap, variation. I think that's the first one we've seen. I, I may have missed one or two, but I'm pretty sure that's the first one we've seen. Or first one I've spotted, actually, <laughs> doing all these boxes. All right, so there you go. Almost done, folks. Two boxes to go. We're almost there. All right, so quick look at the AL Central. Indians, 102. I think they could probably win another 100 games again, I think. Twins, 85 wins. That was a very surprising season for the Twins. Got into the playoffs. I wish they would have improved that starting pitching, but I could see them winning around that around that again. Royals, they lost a lot. They're, they're, they're kind of rebuilding now. They won 80 games last year. I think they're going to lose. They didn't get better. And I think they're going to lose more. White Sox, Paul says Twins better. White Sox, I think, could be pretty surprising. They won 67 games last year. I could see the White Sox winning. Actually, I could see the White Sox winning those 80 games at the Royals. I can see those those win totals flipping. I can see the White Sox winning like 80, and then the Royals winning like 67 or 70 games. Tigers are going to be a bad team this year, I think. You, you might see Miguel Cabrera just ball out, but then that would be it. Tigers, 64 wins, maybe even less. Maybe probably right around there, though. Uh, we, we briefly talked about the AL West. Astros with 101 wins. And they got Garrett Cole. <laughs> that, might, that record might be, I mean, they might win another 101 games again. I mean, 100, winning 100 games is not easy. Losing 100 games is also not easy, but winning 100 games is not easy. But I think they could do it. The Angels won 80 games last year, and they, they kind of let the, a playoff spot slip away from them at the end of the month, but well, the last month of the season. But they got, they got kind of close. They won 80 games. I think they're going to win more. 85, 86, 87 games maybe? Playoff spot perhaps? Paul's Mariners, 78 wins. Tied with the Rangers, also had 78 wins. In the, I don't know, I, as we were talking about, the Mariners are kind of a weird team. They could win 75 games, they could win 85 games. I have no idea. Paul says Angels the same. I see the Angels. The Angels had it. Justin Upton's back. Ian Kinsler. They've got they, Zach Cozart. Otani. Healthy Mike Trout for the entire season. And for the first time in a long time, Albert Pulse is coming into camp healthy. Without coming off like a crazy injury or anything like that. There's our uh, purple chrome hot box. Those are one per case. The Rangers will get worse. Mariners should probably win like 80, 82 games. I could see the A's getting a little bit better because they're always, they always surprise. All right, we'll go through the National League at the end of the box. And here are your purple chromes, Noah Syndergaard. So they're not numbered or anything like that, but just, just a different parallel, different hot box. I hate these upside-down cards. I Michael Conforto for the Mets, so Mets for the first two. Joey Votto for the Reds. D 
Gordon, Marlins edition. So obviously NL East will get that one. Justin Verlander, speaking of the Astros. Anthony Rizzo. Chris Bryant, teammate. So the Cubs with a couple right there. Paul saying, uh, Angels will never stay healthy all year, like just like the Mariners. It'd be, yeah, it's surprising how, how really sometimes it's not necessarily, you know, the best team, right? It's literally like, who who can stay uh, who can stay healthy? I don't know where everyone is in the chat. They were just like heritage. We'll see you an hour, Joe. I think they just ditched me, Paul. It's just you and me. Nice Aaron Judge. Everyone's like, we'll catch you an hour, Joe, when heritage is done. I'm glad you're hanging out with me, Paul. Al East with that one, Coop, of course. Let's just tell everybody that we gave away a ton of break credit in the middle to the chat. And then I'll be like, oh man. I was like, had to be present to win. There's Robinson Cano for the Mariners. And there's Kyle Shorber for the Cubbies out of 569. The best pull in prime cuts? I, I honestly don't remember. It's been a while since we've done prime cuts. There's Eric Hosmer, still Royals edition here. More Cubs. And there there's the uh, action variation. Jose Altuve, AL West Anthony with that one. You can see 01 at the end of that card there. I know I pulled something nice for TJ. TJ reminded me earlier about something nice we pulled for him. There's a nice Mike Trout for the Angels. Uh, again, another one for the AL West, Anthony. For the Orioles, 2018 Rookie All-Stars. Mike Moustakis, purple for the Royals. There's Jake Lamb for the Diamondbacks and another David Price relic for the AL East Coupe. Giancarlo Stanton, Marlins edition, purple chrome. He's gonna be this way. There we go. See, I'm always I'm always looking for the 1969 variation there too. Nice. These are two main guys for my Dodgers. Hoping that they will be the next big thing for my boys in blue. Benintendi and black border Lorenzo Kane for the Royals. AL Central Coupe. Favorite product to open or products? That's a good question. I uh, I tend to enjoy the higher end stuff. I think there's a lot more action there. So like National Treasures, I think. Like flawless is too quick, and a Mac a full case of Immaculate actually for higher end wise is a little too long. I think National Treasures fits a really nice sweet spot, and um, and most of the time they're pretty loaded with big hits. So a lot of train whistles, a lot of fun fun things to do there. Um, I have to admit I do kind of like these longer products as well. 
like these longer breaks because that gives uh, that gives everyone a chance to to sort of discuss you know different things you know as so we have a lot longer time to sort of chat although it's pretty quiet in the chat tonight all right last box of heritage everyone last box should take about another 10 minutes or so I think we're right on schedule all right so let's rapid fire through the National League uh, oh yeah, the super break still does stuff. We haven't gotten any super break stuff in a while. Uh, okay, so let's rapid fire through the National League. Uh, National League Nationals, ninety-seven wins. I think they'll. I think they've they've gotten better. They shored up their bullpen last year. I think they're gonna be good. Marlins wants to finish second with seventy-seven wins. I think they're gonna lose a lot of games. Probably gonna probably end up. Last with 66, 65 wins or something. Maybe even under their win, their Vegas win total, 64 and a half. Uh, Braves got a little bit better. I could see them winning 70. They won 72 last year. High 70s. Uh, Mets. I could see the Mets. Mets are a little inconsistent too. You never know what's gonna happen with the Mets, but I could see them winning 80 games. They could they could surprise everybody. Phillies are gonna be better too. They won 66 games last year. They've got a young team that's getting better and better. They're going to win more games. They're going, be, they're going to be better. Cubs won 92 games last year. I think they're going to be better. Brewers did get better, and their record should be a lot better. I could see them battling the Cubs for the top of the NL Central, believe it or not. I could see the, the Brewers getting uh, I could see the Brewers getting some starting pitching in the middle of the season. You know? Like, I could see them going, okay, let's see what we got pitching-wise for the first couple months. And then I think if they're if they're having a good first month or two of the season, I think they'll be like, bang. They'll they'll pull the trigger on something. Oh, or, you know what? Jay Garrietta is still out there. <laughs> Lance Lynn is still out there. Alex, even, Alex Cobb even. Alex Cobb is still out there as free agents. Why not, Brewers? Add, add some starting pitching there. You know, even if it is like Arietta, you overpay for Arietta for a shorter term, like two or three years. I would like that move a lot. So Brewers, Cubs could be battling. Uh, Cardinals should be better, but they got to contend with the uh, Cubs and the Brewers. Pirates, unfortunately, are gonna have they won seventy five last year. I think they're they're looks like they're in a rebuild, but it'll be good to see some of their young players that we've seen in like Bowman draft and stuff start to play. And Reds should be a little bit better too, but I think it'll be either the Pirates or the Reds in the cellar. Cardinals kind of will finish right in the middle of the division. And it'll be the Cubs Brewers kind of battling it out. In the NL West, finally, my NL West, Dodgers won 104 games last year. That's not going to happen. That's tough to win 104 games. But I think they are going to win the division, but probably not with that many wins because they've got the Diamondbacks who won 93 last year. They got Rockies even won 87 last year. Then the Padres are going to get be better with 71 wins. Giants are going to be better than 64 wins. So you might see, I mean, you might see a team in the NL West win the division with like 89 or 90 wins. And it'll be like the Dodgers will have 89 wins and win the division or 92 or something like that. You know, Diamondbacks will win, will be second with like 91. Rockies will win like 87. Pir Padres will win like 80. Giants will win like 87 or something like that. It'll be, I think it's going to be a big battle uh, this year. All right, last box. Good luck, everybody. Oh, that looked like there was a big scratch in the back. It was just a, just a wire in the back of the photo. Is Bellinger doing something different in this? No, he's not. Just a regular base card. I guess I never, didn't really pay attention to the picture. Paul Goldschmidt, Chrome. 
out of 999. NL West. That'll be for Jeremy Merle. Just a regular base card. Oh, did, was there a Yankees color swap that I missed? Thanks. How long ago? You mean, do you remember the... Uh, Oh, there's the color swap. Did I miss an auto? I don't think I missed an autograph. Did I? I think there's a facsimile auto there. This was a stack that we already did. I don't think I missed an autograph. Yeah, the color swap is that Clint Frazier. Good eye, folks. Thank you. There you go. AL East Coop with that one. You see card 02, I think. The ones in the end in 02. Clint Frazier's supposed to be supposed to be pretty good this year, too. That might be another big, big rookie. There's Goldie. We met Goldschmidt at the Topps Industry Conference. So thanks to Topps for that. The, the difficult autos are the ones where the guys are wearing a dark uniform and then like the, the blue ink is like right over there. That makes it tough when you're kind of breezing through these cards. Wow, nice. Mike's saying, your brother pulled a trout nickname out of a blaster at Walmart last night? That's awesome. I love stories like that. I feel like we haven't seen the hit yet. Now I'm trying to be all cautious so I don't miss it. I feel like we're getting closer and closer to it. It's either a relic or an autograph, and I don't think I see a relic, so it must be an auto. I hope. Where are you? Oh, there it is. I see it. It is for the Cardinals, Harrison Bader. For the Redbirds, NL Central Asa with that one. There it is. And there you go, folks. So unless there's an Otani or a short print here or something like that, I think that might be it. That is it, folks. Let's see what we got in those box toppers, and then we'll do some randomizers. We have old George Stone, Georgie Stone, old Stoney. For the Braves, AL East. Everyone remembers, I don't remember George Stone. All right. Next original. Some of these can actually be autographed too, which is the cool part. Is Odolfo Phillips. Dolphy, as they called him. 
Old Dolphy for the Cubs and L Central. Brian Crouch of the NL East. All right. And the box topper. Good luck. On the back, it's Reese Hoskins. It's balling out. And there's Aaron Judge, Blake Snell, and Cardinals edition of Dexter Fowler. All right. Let's do a left-right center randomizer for these. We'll also do a left-right randomizer. There's also left-right cards. I think most of the left-right cards are the same team, but... We'll do it just, just in case. And we've got a randomizer to do right here, too. So let's get three randomizers. <laughs> That's right. The box hopper centering is as good as it was in 1969. Oh. They're, they're really, the attention to detail is what I love about this 2018 Heritage set, Mike. All right, let's get some blank lists here. Okay. So we'll do a left-right randomizer. We'll do a left, right, and center randomizer. And then everyone here gets a shot at the March Madness spot and the non-sports spot. After this same dice roll, that will be seven. Lucky seven, five and a two. Left, right first. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Stays with the right side after seven times. So all the uh, the two player cards will be on the right side. Seven times for left, right, and center. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Left side will get them. So all the left side teams, that saves me the trouble of doing a top-bottom randomizer. The left side teams right here will get any of these three player cards right there. Okay, last but not least, Five and a two, seven times for the names. Name on top gets into our March Madness promo. Brand new promo. I love March Madness. Seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seventh and final time. After seven times, Scott Cooper. Coop. He had the odds. He, he had two spots in this one. Gets the uh, March Madness spot. Congrats. And Brian Crouch with any of those non-sports cards that were in there. There were, there were a number of them. I don't. I think they fall like maybe one out of every 20 packs or something like that. So there you have it. Thanks very much, everyone. Joe for jazbeeshobbyland.com. We'll see you next time for more Heritage. we got personal boxes. Those are the only things we have left now. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye.